thick enough to grow slender stalks that are easy to cut and process. You sure didn't need any weed spray. It was so dense that the weeds didn't have a chance. And there again, it come up soon enough and quick enough that it got ahead of the weeds. I don't recall any weeds at all in it. Here's a Canada thistle that couldn't stand the competition. Dead as a dodo. Thus, hemp leaves the ground in good condition for the following crop. Now, 43 was kind of a wet year, especially in August. It was also hotter than normal. So it was a case where this stuff worked very well for that kind of hemp. It was um, cut with a John Deere power takeoff miner that was made particularly for this tall crop. It was supposed to lay there at least three weeks, depending on the weather, to season, dry or whatever. And um, it was supposed to be turned. Some people did, I'll have to confess. I went once across the field and they decided that was for somebody else. My granddad didn't do it the way that most of them do it because what he did, he took a binder, the same one for doing oats. He'd take off all the oat stuff and just run her straight through and on the ground. A lot of them had a special binder and they didn't plant theirs unless they had the binder. International Harvester made a pickup machine as every bit as wide as the tallest hemp. It had fingers on it that picked it up and pushed it back into an otter. And they had baling twine in a box just like you would have on a, a grain binder. And um, tied it in bundles and then you, later on, well, as soon as you could, you had to shock it. And he would use the dew to help rot out some of the interior part of the hemp plant. So they were able to go out there, and the dew really helped them a big time. So in doing that, when they flipped it over, it only took about another three weeks to finish rotting it, and then they could go out there, and they were using the German prisoners from up near Rockford, Camp Grant, which is where the Greater Rockford Airport is now located. They would come down, and they would help turn it, and they would shock it up. They had two armed guards with them. Those fellows worked just like good kids would, you know, and uh, they wouldn't have needed a guard. They were here and they were, <laughs> nobody was shooting at them, and uh, the neighbor, George Gates, could talk a little German, and they would converse, you know, enough that they would feel a little more at home. But it worked the men that worked with them. You just didn't talk to them, and you just laid like the ten prisoners of war, he just took 10 cigarettes and laid it out. And no touch. Pretty soon you see all 10 of them smoking. They done the work then. Now the stuff was 11 feet tall. It's kind of a challenge. And he never really said how they got it out of there. And I'm talking to some of the other people who remember it. It was a pretty, since it was so long, you couldn't put it crossways because you could run every car off the road. These highways were a lot narrower than they are today. I rode with my dad, he hauled it, and they put it crossways on the truck, and you know when you get 12 foot uh, stuff on a truck, you're pretty wide. Well, we run in trouble with the state cops. They wanted to find my dad, but they'd put it on tractor and wagons, and they wouldn't bother them because they were farm implements. They moved most of it by hay racks and tractors, and you had to get on the highway because the plant was located on the highway. You couldn't come in the back road, so. But I remember him saying, I think government paid him about $85 an acre. We had our days that you could haul it up to the hemp mill. Otherwise, everybody would have been there once and been organized confusion. Took it up there and weighed it and out to the stackyard, which is west of the present hemp mill. There weren't all that many buildings up there at that time. There was the main office building to the front and the scales and the processing machinery they had. As I recall, it made about 125 bushel per acre, which wasn't bad. A neighbor had to help haul his over here at the mill, I think. Then the government hired me one day to throw it off behind the binder, but they wouldn't pay me. I didn't have a social security number. Well, the, the fiber, of course, was on the outside of the stock, and uh, they run it through breakers to break that inside pith, but the fibers were long and strong. 
if I remember right, it was uh, about 900 pounds of fiber per acre. After they got done gr growing it, and then they hauled it in, then they found out that, uh, boy, the ground was really depleted. I thought the ground was kind of mushy in the spring when it thawed out, it loosened up the ground. Some thought it was horribly hard on the land. I, we never found that the case. It was a lot like soybeans as far as the uh, root was concerned. It loosened the soil almost too much because if you would get any soil erosion through the winter or the spring, the uh, land would wash too much. We didn't have any trouble like that. We would have put the field in corn the next year and if anything, it uh, simulated instead of depleting the, the, the uh, soil. We didn't find it uh, destructive at all. They thought that they should grow for one more year, all, everybody on different land if they had it, and use that as emergency backup. Because in war, you're never sure where things are gonna go. Even though the Japanese were being driven out, they could do like the Germans did in the Battle of the Bulge and make one huge offensive. So they thought they should have some on hand. Well, they didn't do it that way, and it turned out uh, the government won on that bet, but uh, you never know. It was just another crop. It wasn't any different than corn crop. It was a war effort, you know, just like we gathered up all the old iron and all that to the junkyard, but it was our way of contributing. We just plain had to do it and done it. It would seem that hemp could come back as another crop. I don't know whether it ever would or not. This is part of our, of, of our history, this patriotic duty. Maybe they weren't going to make quite as much as they might on another crop, but this was my, my war effort, and this is how I could help out. Hemp for victory.